Hello everyone, my name is Iris France. We are Lian Wanru. Today we are going to continue to talk about the weak axiom of reveal preference, also known as WAP. In particular, I'm going to take a look at example in a Hall of Variance textbook, Table 7.1 and 7.2. This is an example of a possible violation of WAP. So in Table 7.1, you can see uh, some observations of one consumer's consumption bundles. So you can treat observations 1, 2, 3 as observation in year 1, year 2, and year 3. And during these three years, we can see that the price of good 1 and good 2 has changed, and uh, the bundle that the consumer purchased has also changed. So you can say, hey, in period 1, um, the price of good 1 is 1, the price of good 2 is 2, and we can observe the consumption bundle. The consumer purchased one unit of good 1, and two units of good two. So you can take a look at the consumption bundle. I'm going to treat good one as a triangle and good two as a star. So it will help you to visualize exactly how many goods um, of each one that the consumer purchased. So we can see in year one, the consumer purchased this bundle, one triangle and two stars. And in year two, period two, that's the price of good one and good two and the consumer purchased two units of good one and one unit of good two. So you can see the consumption bundle will be two triangles and one star. And in year three, you can see the price of good one and good two are both one, and the consumer purchased two units of good one and two units of good two. So you have two triangles and two stars in a bundle. Now here's a tip to see whether there's a violation against a warp. First, you're going to calculate the cost of each bundle, so bundle 1, 2, 3, in every single year. So not only that you calculate the cost of bundle 1 in year 1, but you also calculate the cost of bundle 1 in year 2 and year 3. Likewise, we're going to calculate the cost of bundle 2, so here's bundle 2, the cost of bundle 2 in year 1, in year 2, and in year 3. And we're also going to calculate the cost of bundle 3 in year 1, in year 2, and year 3. Now we know that the consumer purchased bundle 1 in year 1, bundle 2 in year 2, and bundle 3 in year 3. So these diagonal bundles are the bundles that are actually purchased. So I'm going to put a circle on it. And note, after we calculate the cost of all bundles in all years, we are going to take a note of those bundles that are affordable, but they were not purchased. So if something is affordable and you didn't purchase, that means you don't like it that much. You don't like it. That's why you didn't buy it. So now, after we write down bundles, notice I have a color code. In year 1 is color blue, in year 2 is color red, and in year 3 is color green. So you can see this is the bundle in year 1, bundle in year 2, bundle in year 3. This is a price in year 1, price in year 2, and price in year 3. So after we calculate all the cost of bundles, now we're going to take a look at the bundles that were affordable but were not purchased in that year. So in year 1, the price of good 1 is 1, the price of good 2 is 2. And we purchased this bundle. We first calculate the cost. In this bundle, we have one good one and two good twos. So we do P1 times X1, so that will be 1 times 1. P2, X2, that will be 2 times 2. And the cost is $5. So we purchase this bundle, we make a circle on that. What about the cost of bundle 2 in year 1? So we know we didn't purchase bundle 2, but we want to see how much it costs. So P1 times X1, that will be 1 times 2, because in bundle 2 we have two good ones. And P2X2 is 2 times 1, because we only have one good one, and the price was 2. And the price of that bundle, the cost of that bundle is $4. Now, 4 is less than 5. So we know that this bundle was affordable, but we didn't buy it. Therefore, we don't like it. So I'm going to put a star on that, which shows you that, hey, in that year, I could afford this bundle, but I didn't buy it. I don't like it. What about bundle 3? So in bundle 3, we have two good ones and two good twos. Now, we are going to use the price of year 1 to calculate the cost of bundle 3. 
and after you do that, the cost is six dollars. So well, six is higher than five, and I didn't buy it, so I can't tell whether I like it or not because it's something that not affordable. You can think about something that is not affordable, but you can't tell whether you like it or not. For example, a hippo is probably very expensive, but you don't like it. So you can't afford it doesn't mean that you like it. Or a diamond may be something you like and you can't afford it either. So when something is not affordable, it doesn't tell you whether you like it or not. But I can conclude that something is affordable, because I purchased something that's $5, that means $4 is something affordable. Something affordable, but I didn't buy it, that means I don't like it. So from this observation, I can conclude that I prefer bundle one to bundle two. Now moving on to year two, I calculate the cost of three bundles again. And I know this is the bundle that I actually purchased because I bought bundle two in year two. Now I'm going to calculate the cost of bundle one in year two. So again, I do P1X1, P2X2. And the price is the price in year two. The bundle was the bundle in year one. So P1 is two, and I bought one unit of good one. So two times one, plus here, P2 is one, and X2 is two. I bought two stars, and the cost is four. So four dollars. Hey, but I purchased a bundle two in year two. So I see that the cost of bundle one in year two is cheaper than the cost of bundle two. But I didn't buy that. I didn't buy bundle one. I bought bundle two in year two. So from that, I can conclude that I actually prefer bundle two to bundle one. That's from my observation. And the cost of bundle three in year two, again, is $6 and that is higher than five. So that's something not affordable. Therefore, I cannot tell whether I prefer bundle three to bundle two or bundle two to bundle three. So I don't write anything there. I just know that I could afford bundle one, but I didn't buy it. And therefore bundle two is preferred to bundle one. And in year three, again, I calculate the cost of three bundles. And I know that I chose bundle three. And after you calculate the cost of bundle one and bundle two, I'm going to leave this as a practice for you. But the cost of uh, bundle one in year three was only $3. And the cost of bundle two in year three is also just $3. Now three is less than four. So I know that both bundle two and bundle one are affordable in year three, but I didn't choose that in year three, I chose bundle three. And therefore I know from this observation that I prefer bundle three to bundle two, and I also prefer bundle three to bundle one. But now we have a problem here because I prefer bundle one to bundle two, and I also prefer bundle two to bundle one. That's a violation of WAP. It's the same thing as you saying, I like Alex more than I like Bob, and I also like Bob more than I like Alex. So which one do you like? You don't know, right? That's a violation. So um, that's an example of variance textbook. I hope this helps. Remember, first you're going to list three observations out, and have a visual idea of, of what bundles you have in each year. And the second is we're going to calculate the cost of each bundle in every single year. So you're going to have a, a matrix that's three by three. And you are going to put a star or know the bundle that's affordable, but you didn't purchase it. So in this the first year, the bundle that you could afford but you didn't buy is bundle two. So from year one, you observe that you bought bundle one, even though bundle two was also affordable. That means you prefer bundle one to bundle two. And in year two, you see that you bought bundle two, but bundle one was affordable and didn't buy it. So that tells you that bundle two is preferred to bundle one. And that's where the violation comes from. You cannot prefer bundle one to bundle two and bundle two to bundle one. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.